In this video, we're going to talk about objects and what you can do with them. All right, we did a little bit of that with these blocks in one of the past videos. I believe the one called UI and Game Making Basics. We talked basically about how to move them, uh, rotate them, um, scale them, anchor them. What else? Uh, give them collision, give them a basic texture and color. Okay, also how to turn shadows on and off. All right, we're going to do a little similar, but more in detail about everything and all the properties. Okay, so up in the top in part, click on the arrow. Easiest one to go with right now, we can do a block. I think it was a really small one to work with. Okay, up here we have move selected. There's select. Let's take move. Let's drag it over where we can work on. All right, it's kind of small. We need it bigger. Let's go to scale. Drag it out, drag it out, drag it out. All right. Gray is not very pretty. Let's give it a better color. Well, first off, let's name this. Let's name this. Look, we had obby blocks before, so let's name this an obby block number two. Two. Naming your stuff's a great way to be organized. Okay. All right. So down here, again, we have properties. If properties isn't open, you can go to view and you look over here. Everything that's dark gray is what's shown on your screen on the UI. I'm clicking this makes it goes away. Clicking it makes it come back. All right. So let's go back to home. Let's go back to select so we don't move it or anything. We do want it to be a little taller than that, actually. So let's go back to scale, grab the green, and bring it up. That'll work. All right, it's getting dark out with that day-night mod. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So up here, you can choose a color along with down here in properties. It's best to work with the properties down here because you can find everything about this or only some of the things up here affect this block. So let's go over to color. Let's give it something closer to the terrain. How's that look? Oh, that's pretty good. What if we wanted, and again, let's move it back to move or select. We want this block to have a collision. Let's show you what happens right now. So, actually, first off, it needs to be anchored. And it also needs to be sitting on the ground. It's pretty close to sitting on the ground. Now, anchored is going to be in the properties down towards the bottom. If you don't anchor something, it's going to fall through the world or fall to the ground. Either way, it's not going to stay where you put it. Okay, so let's hit play. And I want to run over there and show you what happens when... Well, I don't know. It may have put collision on by default. Let's go see it. If we can run into it and bump into it, we know collisions on. Boom. Yep, collisions on. See how we're hitting it? There's a checkbox that'll make it to where collisions not always on. All right, let's stop this. Go back out. I'll show you where that is. So down here in the bottom, we have can collide and can touch. Can touch is important for, say, spawn blocks and for checkpoints, like in obbies, because you need to be able to touch the block so the block knows it's been touched, so the code can count that as a checkpoint. <clears throat> okay. So we've gone over the top here, brick color. Normally you change color by this guy here. You can actually put in the actual number values, the HTML code, or you can pick a color, you can save custom colors. And so picking a screen color would allow you to pick something off the screen here. Try to match it the best you can. That gave us that really dark black though. So let's try that again. Can we get something higher on that scale? Uh, still pretty black. I don't know if I like that. That's coming out pretty dark. 
So let's go back to color and we'll just get ourselves a dark green and bring it down just a little bit like that. Okay. All right, so material, plastic, that's going to be what it looks like. See here on the surface, there's going to be a lot of options. Oh, wrong one. Plastic, we're going to have ice. Above that, we still have asphalt, basalt, brick, cobblestone, concrete, corroded metal, Lava. Lots of different things. Diamond plate, you can make factory style games. A lot of different options here. Um, right now, we don't want to go with any of this stuff. So let's just put it back on plastic. We're going to show you something else. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit of a cough. All right, so we're back on this guy. We put it back on plastic. Okay, reflectance. If you want it to be reflectant of the sky or objects or players, you can actually turn that number up. One will give you standard reflectance on it. Can't really see so much here without the darkness, but look at the way that thing reflects. That thing is super shiny. It's almost like a mirror. We don't need that. So we go back in there, we go to obby block, we take reflectance off, so boom, it's gone. Now that can be done in um, like points. Let me show you smaller amount. So let's say you wanted reflectance of 0.1. It can give you a little bit of some kind of realism on some blocks if you need that. Let's say if you really wanted plastic, plastic would be shiny. You know, so it could make sense. Bring it back on zero and give us that base color. Now transparency. One will make something completely disappear. Now again, going with point numbers, partly disappear. Point three, slightly. Uh, this comes into play when you want like secret doors or pathways. You want to slightly kind of hint to where they are or platforms that look like they're visible, but you can actually jump on them in obbies. There's a lot of different reasons you might want to use this. Okay, and let's get clicked back on it. Neither of those we're going to mess with. Lock actually locks all the properties, how they are and where it is. So you can't even move it, but I can't even click on it or do anything if I wanted to. And that's really good if you know that an object is exactly where you want in the game and it's perfect and you know you're not going to touch it ever again. You know to lock it and it's done. It won't ever get moved. It won't get messed with. No accidents will happen. You know, it'll be perfect and ready. Um, we're going to unlock it because we still want to change things. Okay. Name is going to be what we named it up here. If we were to change this, this will also change. If we change this, this will also change. Uh, parent. Remember I explained parents and children. Parent is the group that the item sits within. The item that's within the group would be the child. So the obby block two is a child of workspace because it's within workspace. And workspace is the parent of obby block two because obby block two is inside of workspace. So that's a parent, that's a child. It works for everything here. Um, like me as a player, which is in the test game, I am a child of players. Players is the parent of the child. There you go. And it's an easy way to explain something that's inside of something else. Or you could say ownership. It's, uh, it's hard, hard to explain. Okay. Um, going on here, let's work our way down. Okay, so size origin, C-frame, pivot offset, all of these numbers change when you move, scale, and rotate it. Now, I wouldn't manually adjust any of these numbers. I would always constantly use rotate, scale, and move. When you move it around, these numbers are going to change. See them in the right of the screen now? It's going to change on the X's, it's going to change on the Y's, and the Z's, depending on where you move it. Okay, let's go back to select and leave it there. Um, again, can collide means you can run into it. Can touch means your character can touch it, which can activate uh, 
buffs for the character that makes him run faster, jump higher. It could be spawn points, it could be checkpoints, it could be a lot of different things. Um, angered means it's going to stay where it is. So let's make an example of that right now. So let me take this, we click on move. Let's bring it over here. We're going to align it up. Best we can like that, bring it forward. Oh, why is it gotta get dark right when I don't need it to? And if we bring it up, we've got it kind of far from there. Up more. Not much of a jump. There we go. It's kind of an up jump from that to it. Don't know what we're doing with this. But right now, if we were to play the game because it's not anchored, this would actually fall down to the ground. And we can test that by instead of play, which is going to spawn us at the spawn point, we actually can choose run and we can view what happens in the game from where we're sitting. So right here, see how it sits here? Now if we look at it, that is because we have it anchored. Now if it wasn't anchored, it would fall. If it was anchored, it wouldn't fall. Okay, so let's hit stop. It comes back up. Let's run it again. There it is, sitting there, because we have it anchored. Okay. Let's try this right here. So we click on this, and all of this is fine. Massless, they can do weird things. Don't turn massless on. It's a rare occasion that you'll actually need massless. Don't mess with root priority. Shape is what we chose initially that we started with. Um, none of these on assembly should be messed with either. Shouldn't have to touch any of those ever. Okay, so the next thing is going to get fun here. So on Obli block here, we can choose insert and we can do texture. And a texture is going to appear on a certain side of the block, like this side here. See how we have it right there? Nice, okay. So when we click on this guy and we come down here, we're going to see that it says face top. Now you can choose front, left, right, bottom, back, all those. So face top. And what we're going to do is go over here and in your toolbox, you know, it's normally sitting on models, but you can choose down to images. And let's look for, let's say, skin. Cobblestone. I don't know if I like any of those. Moss stone. Let's check that out. So we entered moss stone. Now moss stone it landed inside, but do we have this set on the right thing? It's on texture top. But it didn't change. I wonder why. Oh, it says face front. We want that on face top. Oh, yes. All right. All right. Okay. So let's delete this guy. And let's drag this guy directly into Obby Block. And let's put it on face top. There we go. All right. So see how we did that? Let's go on the top. And let's do copy. Now, how many more sides do we have on this? One, two, three, four, and the bottom five. So right here into Obby Block, we're going to go paste into, and we're going to name this bottom and on bottom we're going to go to face and choose bottom and go check it yep now we have our texture on the bottom and this is pretty much you could texture any object the same way we're doing this so right click paste into what are our other options let me check first. We have back, we have bottom, so back, front, left, and right. Okay. 
So let's get this one and we'll do back and front. Back. Let's go down here to where it's located and go back. And then let's go back up here and go paste. And we're going to do front. Go down with the settings, change it to front. Let's go view those. We already seen that one pop up. We've seen that one pop up. Now we need left and right. And then we'll have texture this whole block. Okay, paste. Left. <coughs> All right. Left. Paste. Seems time confusing or consuming, but once you make one of these, you can just copy this and keep using it over and over whenever you want. All right, so we need right. And that's it. Did we make the left? Yes, we did. Right. Let's set that up. There we go. All right, so now every side on this thing has our texture on it. It's anchored. It has collision on. It's actually much better looking than our other blocks. Much better. So this is what we could do. Watch this. So let's take this to here. Copy. Let's go to Hobby Blocks. Do paste into. Then go to Hobby Block. Paste into. See how useful of all that we made it? So it's pretty much an asset we created out of a picture that we can now use on all our blocks to make them look better. Notice how that one's a lot skinnier than those? Should we change that? Yeah, let's fix that. So let's go click on that. Let's go to scale. We're going to grab the green and we're going to crack it down. That looks pretty good right there. Okay, back to move. Let's select either one. And there we go. It's a lot lighter, but that's okay. So let's see. All right. That's pretty much how to modify an object. We know that it's anchored. It's going to stay where it is. We've textured on every side. Um, that's pretty much it. There's more things you can do to it, but all those are going to require scripts. Um, besides that, we're good to go. I hope you guys uh, learned something. I helped you out. You guys have a great day.